Let's start with scene manipulation. The first thing would be to load the DXF file into your scene of Gem40. Go to Mesh, Load DXF, and select a DXF file to load. There's also another way that you could have loaded a DXF file into Gem40, and that's by going to Windows Explorer, and then use Windows Explorer and just drag and drop the file into the scene. That would, would have worked the same way as well. Now that you've got something in your scene, let's look at the mouse functions. To manipulate the scene within Gem40, you use the left mouse button to rotate. So you press the left mouse button in and you can ro rotate the objects within the scene. You can use the middle mouse button and press that in to pan. So that move it around within the scene and you can zoom in one of two ways. You can either keep the right mouse button in and move the mouse up and down or you can use the mouse wheel to scroll and then um, uh, zoom into the scene, in and out of the scene, scene in that way as well. An important function is to move the focus point and that is done by double clicking at any location. So if I double click on a location, that will make that new point uh, my focus point. And if I need to shift my focus to another object or to another place in the scene, I can just double click on that location in the scene and that will shift the focus to the new location. And I can just use this to move around within the scene and go to particular locations. What you'll also find is that when you double click in a particular location, the existing northing and elevation of that particular location that you've been double clicking will be shown in the text box, box down the bottom. If you double click on empty space, that will then center the objects in the scene, although it will not zoom out of the scene. To do that, you can press this button, but we'll talk about more about this button in a short while. You can also press the I button on your keyboard to initialize the scene, and that will be the same as when you press the P button for plan view, and then zoom out to, to, to show the whole object, so all the objects that's currently visible in your scene. Two keyboard buttons that's really important, or two keys that's really important, is the shift key and the control key. For example, the shift key allows you to make multiple selections or multiple actions and it works across the whole of Gem40. For example, if I want to select multiple objects within the scene, we'll talk about this more in a, in a, in a future video, but if I press the I button, I can now make a selection, and as I press on any one of these objects, you'll see that that particular object is selected, but the previous objects are then unselected. But if I key uh, press uh, Shift in, I can make multiple selections, and you can see each one of these objects that I'm selecting is now shown um, as, as selected as well. And you can also see each one of these objects as I select them will show the wireframe and the wireframe will indicate that this particular object is now selected. And as I select this object, you'll see it also happens on the left hand side in this list box. Uh, the same object objects will be selected there as well. If I want to make a selection that's now outside my visible scene, I can press in control and control allows me to reposition my scene without activating the action that's currently active and it works across the whole of Gem40. I can reposition myself, I can press in shift again and I can continue my selection. When I'm done selecting all the objects that's of interest to me, I can right click and I can say for example, remove these objects and I'll only set with the remaining objects within my scene. Let's talk about the interface. The interface consists of a ribbon, and the ribbon's, the ribbon's got multiple tabs. Then you've got a left panel on the left hand side, you've got a bottom panel, and a panel on the right hand side. But you also have a top toolbar, a left toolbar, and a bottom toolbar, so the toolbars are different from the panels, and then the final um, component of this interface would be the status bar down the bottom of the interface. When you hover your mouse on top of any of the buttons, a tooltip will come up, and the tooltip will give you a short description of the purpose of that particular button. 